Hello everyone, welcome to the Jenkins Infrastructure Team Meeting. Today we are the 17th of October 2023. Around the virtual table, we have myself, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Stéphane Merle, Bruno Verharten, and Kevin Martins. Hello everyone. Let's get started with announcement. First of all, the release 2. Is it 3, 4, 8? No. It's 4 to 8, is that correct? Uh, is out, release. Packages and the Docker image. Um, I haven't checked for the change log, Kevin. Uh, were you able or did you see something or you don't know? Uh, so I didn't realize Mark was traveling today. Uh, so I'm going to uh, update that and merge that as either towards the end of the meeting or after, like as soon as the meeting ends. So it should be live uh, just a little while. Cool. Thanks. Change log. OK. Um, on the announcements, uh, VPN VM uh, was done for the fourth time in less than 10 days. Uh, add outage for the fourth time today. Um, I didn't add time to write an issue yet. But uh, no issue yet. Next milestone, just for the postmortem. Um, restart in the Azure console. Uh, uh, solve the issue, like uh, each time it happened. But I took the opportunity to increase the VM size to B2S. The goal was to have two vCPU instead of only one. Uh, and it has been applied with the hotfix on Terraform. So to avoid Terraform decreasing the VM size a second time, we don't want that. So now we'll watch what the problem is. Uh, so different, different elements here. I will try to write down the result of the analysis, but let's see if uh, two vCPU is enough because it was the smallest virtual machine we could find. Um, that could be candidate for an RM machine in the future, uh, because the cost went to uh, $7 to $30 monthly with this increase, which is not that much. Uh, but yeah, um, candidate for RM64. Uh, that might require a bit of adjustment. That won't be an easy one because it depends on the amount of NIC available for the virtual machines, but that could be okay. Yes, in Bruno closet. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> An ampere machine. An ampere machine. <laughs> That's not that much, but uh, I've put it in announcement because it's new and it's not written yet. So just to be sure it's written somewhere at least. Uh, do you have other announcements, folks? Okay. Upcoming calendar. I believe that we will have a weekly next week, as the name implies. <laughs> next Tuesday. Sorry. I'm a, I love myself joke, even if it's not funny. We have an LTS tomorrow. Um, I don't remember what number is. Let me check. See, I Jenkins I and had an increment the last digits. It will be four one four dot three. Cool, you're the best. Thanks. Tomorrow. Uh, so please don't break the infrastructure tomorrow during the LTS release. Um, a word on security release. No one has been planned. However, there will be a security advisory in two days after both releases, uh, only on the core, because both the weekly tomorrow and the, the weekly today and the uh, tomorrow LTS release have fix on JT server about an HTTP2 potential denial of service attack. So that was fixed on JT one or two weeks ago. 
Um, and now it's fixed on weekly and it will be on the LTS tomorrow. The Jenkins infrastructure is not at risk because we have a Apache or Nginx server on the public services that could be subject to DDoS. And the configuration we have on this uh, blocks uh, by default the attack. It's not possible to use it. I'm not writing this here. Uh, because the advisory will be posteriori, but yeah. Do you have questions on this one? Nope, okay. Um, next major event, DevOps World on FOSDEM. Let me check last week. Yeah. So, yep. I don't remember when will be the next DevOps World major event. But it for will be sure, fifth of December in London. Oh, maybe no. Oh, sorry. There may there must be the Singapore yeah, one changed. before. Yep. Yep. And oh. I don't have the date. Okay, let's wait for Mark next week. He will have the date in mind. And I think there may be a Jenkins community something in Santa Clara tomorrow or two days from now. Yep, tomorrow and in two days, Santa Clara will be DevOps World. Yep. And then there will be a no, no, there will be a Jenkins oh, community after. gathering meetup something. Yep. Oh, nice. Community gathering it has been organized by Alisa. Cool. So that means KK might be there. So if you're in the area, mm -hmm. come say hello. None of the five of us will be there. However, I believe Mark White and Kosuke might be there at least. Yep. Uh, and the first them at Brussels. Yes, and for and February. I heard John Mark may have found a place to hold something with the community. Mm -hmm. um, so he's about oh, to yeah. see if it will work, uh, I think, this afternoon. So we may do something at the same time as for them or the day, day before. We'll see. Nice. Um, yeah, that's all. Let's get started with the work. Is that okay for you? Let's go then. The work we were able to close. Jenkins account creation issue. Uh, we had a user. He had a pro they have a, they had a problem. In that case, it was a, uh, it was marked on account app as a spam due to cookie. Initially, that spam protection was made for person with a cookie showing that they already have a session opened with a different account. So if you try multiple accounts on the same web browser session, then it's closed because it's someone automated using JavaScript or cross-scripting. Um, we start having doubts that the fact that we made account app a replicated service using sticky session because there is no shared session between all the replicas um, is having an impact on this one. That will be you have a cookie and you are sent to the second uh, machine due to a sticky problem. And that result in the second replica saying, oh, I don't know that cookie and considering it's um, a spam potential and blocking the account creation. I'm not sure what will be the next step. We could try to for a few days to shrink down to one replica. We don't need AHA, uh, not for the the required amount of request and even the highly available system, it can afford a restart. Uh, so we'll, let's try some elements. But for now, when you see such an account, you can create the account and help them. Uh, next step is uh, a spammer was sending bad messages on Jira. It has been treated. So thanks for the person who took care of this one. Next step, plugin backend is in Lithi. Uh, that's that's something that happened two weeks ago. Um, let me open just to be sure my timeline is okay because my brain is, yeah. That was two weeks ago. I forgot to close it last week. We had an, an outage on plugin backends, my fault, uh, and forgot to close the issue. So nothing to check here. Thanks to the work of the whole team, now plugin site API, the backend of the plugin site is now building on the CI and we are able to deploy, and we were able to deploy eight months of changes or non-changes at once. <laughs> Yay. 
So congrats everyone involved in helping on this one because we had to fix a lot of uh, minor things. The main takeaway is that we are stuck to GDK 8 for building that website, but as pointed by uh, Gavin, thanks Gavin for that, we should be able to get rid of the plugin backend API that require a bit of work on the front end part though, as Binek is the person taking that, we, they, he might need help. The goal is to see what is left. There were issues with relative links to image resources that could break so screenshots on the plugin Jenkins IO uh, plugin documentations. But the goal will be to only have a front end because we generate the content. The content is generated from the backend API and then we have a set of static resources passed to the front end web server. And we could get rid of the backend part. So no more GDK8, no more API, and that should be okay. So that's why I propose, if no one object, that we don't spend any effort on bumping the GDK version. GDK 8 will be there for still a long time, even more than GDK 11. So there is no emergency here. There, um, and yeah, we try to focus our effort on getting rid, rid of the whole service. Any objection, question? Okay, so that leads me to the second part. Thanks, Bruno, Stefan, for taking care of that backend was OM killed since July. Like thousands of out of memory kernel kill of the pod. For a good reason, we upgraded Kubernetes to use Ubuntu 22.04 machines behind, which features C groups version two, the mechanism on the Linux kernel, which take care of controlling the resources. So that means the GDK that was really ancient inside, it was a GDK 8 from 18 months ago because it wasn't building since February at least. So that old GDK 8 version wasn't able to read the control groups version 2 format. So it said, oh, I don't know, I don't see any control group. Let's ask directly the hardware, how much memory do I have? And since it's a virtual machine, the hardware was a big, big metal machine be below that said, oh, you have 300 gigabytes of memory. So the plugin website tried to use 25% of that. Of course, it was forbidden by Kubernetes and it was killed, hence the OM kill. Solution was easy, upgrading the to the latest GDK 8 version, which has the C group V2 backport feature and it worked very well. So thanks again, Bruno and Stefan, for taking care of that analysis, update, bearing on this. Anything else to add on this one? Nope. Uh, we had three issues closed as not planned. There was an, a request from Adrien on plugin health core about logs, but he found the issue himself. So he closed the issue. Thanks, Adrien. <laughs> um, there was someone asking to, to update element on the Mina SSH, the API plugin. Uh, uh, Mark closed the issue because the outline problem is uh, way deeper and way more complex than just updating a readme or metadata. I don't want to deep dive on the reason. Uh, Mark gave a link to an update center issue that you can check. That's not an easy one. It's related to the plugin ID, plugin name, and repository name. Uh, I believe Daniel has lost a lot of errors on that topic. And finally, a user never um, was blacklisted because uh, the domain for his email was marked as a potential spam uh, area, which is true. And it's, it's uh, denied automatically by the account app. It's on the list and on source code. So I asked the user if they had another email or what was the, their expectation and they never answered, so close the issue. Did I miss something on the work we were able to close and complete? No, okay. So let's continue on the work in progress. Uh, I'm taking the items uh, on the order of the list. Is that okay? Or do you want me to order them by priority? Okay, so no objection, taking them on the order of the list. Um, a user 
uh, open an issue about one of the mirrors hosted by Belnet.b, which is a Belgium provider, who are sponsoring us by giving us a mirror for the download. It looks like they, are, they have network issues and their company is not alone. Two or three person mentioned that problem uh, as if their IP ranges were uh, blocked by FTP Belnet access. I'm not really sure about what the problem is, but that was a good opportunity to contact the person at Belnet. We haven't received an answer and we don't have uh, contacts. So I'm going to try to escalate directly to the mirror email because I believe I found an email somewhere on one of the pages. And I will try also to check with my uh, neighbor because I know two of them are working for the company behind Belnet. So I'm going to check internally if we can have an explanation. Um, I'm a bit uh, confused because there is no formal proof that the problem is not on the user side. Do they have outbound connectivity firewall? It's hard to prove it's only Belnet. Um, so as a temporary measure, I've disabled the, the mirror directly in mirror bits. And the goal is, Either we receive an answer from Belnet and we re and we can prove it's not their problem, it's not their fault, so we can enable the mirror again. If we don't receive an answer from Belnet, that means we don't have an administrator who are, who are able to help us. So in that case, I'm gonna disable the mirror again and remove it. And if someone come there, they will have to help us finding an administrator to be a contact. We cannot have uh, while mirrors with no administrator. If anything happens on this mirror, we cannot endorse what they're doing. So that's why we need the contact there. That would be the same rule as the Alibaba and uh, ezuni.gp uh, mirrors that we deleted because no one answer. Any question on this one? So I'm gonna uh, add it to the new milestone. I will take care of the contact here unless someone object and want to take the task on their hand. No, okay. Good. And uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, go ahead. I'm good. Cool. Next task, track the new GDK21, which was released. Thanks Bruno for launching the subject. Um, I believe that we have currently two pull requests. One was merged on Packer image and did not work as expected. And the second one is being discussed. Uh, so work in progress, we have to continue fixing these issues. Uh, the main core issue on the one who failed is that, hey folks, you updated the update clean manifest, but you didn't update it. The code which, are, which is doing the real life and update CLI only say, hey, here's the new version, but you need to update the URL on the provisioning scripts. Unpacker. Yeah, I saw the e so, in the URL. Uh, um, since uh, you were quite busy, I took on me to add on the on the pull request on Packer image uh, the comparison between the uh, the wrong and the correct URL to help you so you can go on accelerated mode on this one. Uh, let, let me take notes. <clears throat> um, okay. Okay. An idea out of the uh, thinking out loud can mm -hmm. see if the tree targets the entire URL as a, so it could replace the entire URL. You won't have to update it in the backer script. Yes, but that, that makes the script really hard to read. We are protected here. Uh, we are protected by the fact that the pull request automated by update CLI is failing its checks. And the error is quite explicit. That's why I cooked him. Eight. So that means, yeah, um, we have checks that validate it working or not. So that's not a problem. We are not breaking the image itself. It's just a failed pull request, the result. Otherwise, that would be a, yeah, a good idea if we had a simpler script. But we have URLs that depends on the architectures we have at least three different URLs today, one for Linux IRM, Linux uh, Intel, and Windows Intel. Need a fix. 
is that does it make sense, survey? Does it answer your question? Yes, yes. Um, and on Poupette, Jenkins Infra, uh, I, I, I haven't checked if we had time to update it, uh, but okay. that would have been the same. You have to update the URL on the Poupette manifest template first. And also for S390X uh, machine. Yeah, Stefan, can you describe? We need the exception for the S390 because the, the um, GDK21 is not available for the S390X. So we need to stick on the early available. So we need to make sure that the code is not uh, using the common uh, version of uh, GDK21 which is on the update CLI manifest. So you already, have, I believe the update CLI part is okay on the pull request yeah. because you removed the because check. Because of Bruno is Exactly. Good. So thanks for that. But now in order to be able to deliver that, uh, issue, that pull request to production, uh, there we have two remaining tasks. We might still have issue with the S390X if we update the template. I'm not sure if there is an easy solution, so be careful. It's, it might be more complicated than we I took initially. Like usually. And uh, as we discussed for later, in order to be sure that we receive a notification when S390X uh, stable version is uh, provided, we can add after that pull request is merged and validated a specific and temporary update clean manifest that will, uh, as explained on the pull request, that will be same source. It checks the latest version of GDK21. And the condition, instead of running a full, fully fledged script, could be only a curl to the specific URL. Because that's the idea that um, Hervé mentioned for Packer image. That's the same idea. Uh, but for update CLI, that will check GDK21 for the version found by the source only for S390X package. Which means in that case, we will receive an, a breaking pull request. And then on that moment, we should be able to remove the exception. Okay, for everyone. Um, new issue, trying to create a new Jenkins community account. I haven't checked this one yet. I believe it's still, uh, Stefan, I think you started to check this one. Oh, that's the one with, with the cookie. Uh, yep. Uh, yes, so it's a, I found yes, it's a quick I found, one. And, and the log I found made me uh, disappointed because I'm, I, it, I feel like there have been a, a password a recovery change asked mm -hmm. before creating a new account. So uh, how can we create a new account if we already have an account and ask for a password reminder? I'm kind of lost okay. with those logs. Okay, so uh, what anyone taking this issue will have to do because I don't see anyone assigned. So I consider it's a team uh, issue unless someone assigned themselves and take care of the subject. Um, we have to check there is no account with that username and no account with that email. I believe that's what you checked. No, because I don't, uh, we need to check because at one okay. point I didn't have any access to that information. Okay. So let's, I, I'm taking notes. So I changed the my that. computer, so maybe with a new one, but at that time, no. There are no account with this email and this username as first step. If there are no accounts, easy path, you create it for them. We assume it's uh, due to the QKIM uh, problem mentioned before, and they will receive an instruction uh, by email. And then you can close the issue telling, oh, check your email, you will have the instructions. If there is an account, then you reset the password of the account and you say, hey, check your email. Okay, good. Works for you. Third case, there is an account with another username but that email. So they need to delete the account by themselves. So they need to be able 
to provide a proof that they own the email associated to this one. Yeah, so they just have to to ask to reset the password. If they got the email, they will receive the Yeah, if they link. want us to, to delete the account, they have to first reset the password. And then they send you an email from that email. You answer and they have to answer a third time. Hello, Mark. You need the free time process. OK. Any question? So next topic is Packer. Stefan, Mike is yours. What's the status on the ghost part? Um, I did uh, validate, you did validate the pull request and merge it with uh, SDF and NPM, I think, version that are mm -hmm. now checked by, by GOS. And the main change on that was that the GOS checks are launched with the user Jenkins as a uh, the the check we were doing in the the sanity check we were doing in the script right now and i started another pull request which is draft now to um, put as much as possible test sanity check in in the ghost and splitting with a common ghost and the linux ghost and then we will have to add a, a windows ghost it's it's on its way yep so is that okay for you to continue on yes, migrating please. Vanity on Linux and I'm taking care of Windows? Okay, good. Migrate more Sanity checks on Linux to us. Stefan. Um, next. My, my main uh, concern right now is to know which, which Sanity check are common or specific to Linux because even the GDK is specific because the path is not the same between Windows and Linux. Move them to GOS and then we will iterate on factorization. Good. Start by moving everything on the shell script to GOS and then we will update and share with Windows if needed. If needed. Okay. Any question? Nope, okay. Next subject, migrate Terraform state from AWS S3 to other buckets. So um, uh, I prepared the code two weeks ago. I was late on that topic. The goal is to stop using S3 buckets for storing our shared Terraform states, the database that Terraform use for projects, and use uh, Azure buckets. We only have three projects on all the Terraform project we have. We have AWS project itself, which makes sense, uh, DigitalOcean, and Fastly. All the other projects, uh, Datadog, Azure, Azure Net, and uh, the Oracle we used are using Azure Bucket already. So we all have everything needed. The last mile was for me, I had to create an IAM AWS account, which has powerful permissions. Um, because I need to do everything on a single machine which have access to both AWS and Azure. So that account is created on AWS. It's restricted to only command line usage. And it has a one week uh, TTL. In one week, it won't be able to be used. We will have still to, to delete it once the migration is finished. The keys for that user are encrypted on my key and access application on macOS. So I don't have any clear text password here. And it's only loaded on environment variable when I need it. As soon as I close my terminal, then the password is not available anymore. So I try to compensate for the risk here because initially I proposed to Stefan and Hervé to create this user as code to have auditability. But the AWS project is doesn't have enough permission to have a super user. It's an egg and chicken problem again. So that's why I created that manual temporary user. Uh, and I've started migrating the states on Fastly right now, and I plan to finish today or tomorrow. Any question on this one? Temp user. Whip. Okay, Stefan, a word on speed up the Docker image library. Yeah, there's nothing that can be shown, but I 
started uh, the test driving development and, and started to find out how I can uh, describe by test what I aim to do. But there is uh, a lot of, how you say that, a lot of uh, possibility of call and I'm uh, struggling not to break everything right now. Okay. Um, do you think you will be able to work on it? Do you want someone else to work with you or to take over? No, for now I need to to um, to uh, keep going by myself, and then I will get back to you or or Hervé to uh, to make sure that my tests are relevant and that they are answering correctly the questions. Then you behavior. Okay. So conceptually, if if uh, I'm I'm rephrasing, so conceptually it's okay, and you are at writing tests that will demonstrate yeah. the concept and what we expect as a new behavior. And once yes, we have validated and that's, these tests, that's not easy because default parameters are not default when we call them during a, a specific uh, um, share, share pipeline library because we we call that chat pipeline by another okay. shared pipeline and we okay so another. that means we need to sync on this one you are trying to integrate tests instead of unit testing no That's i want okay. to understand the test that we are using right now okay, to, okay. so we need sync on this one just to help you understanding the current one so you can write new tests exactly. is my understanding correct okay yes. but i still need some time alone on that yep. before because you will you will point me stuff and i will be mm -mm, no no Okay. Mark can understand Anyth what I mean. Anything to add on that topic? Okay. Upgrade to Kubernetes 1.26. Um, so we weren't sure who was in charge of this one last week. Uh, I started to read change log, but I haven't done anything. I believe neither Stefan or Harvey did. Can you confirm? Yeah, I did nothing. Okay. Uh, Sorry, Harry? Nothing to. Okay. Uh, I'm interested in taking the subject in hand this week. Is there any objection on this? Uh, my proposal is that I'm gonna prepare work for migrating DigitalOcean to 1.26. That's the most important one because that 1.25 will be deprecated end of month on DigitalOcean. And once I've opened the pull requests, I won't merge them immediately. I will try to do a knowledge sharing session with at least one other team member. Is that okay for everyone? I won't proceed until I have uh, someone who reviewed that either with me or that feel like they could do it on their own theoretically. That means I will search where you live and I will come, come for you if no one helps me on that topic. <laughs> come. Scared base development. Change luck to finish checking. Any question? Preparing the O and knowledge sharing. Um, next one. So, as part of that, uh, what I said, I don't. I need to stop working alone on some tasks to share knowledge. Same idea for two other major topics, updates on the migration and IRM64. So just to confirm publicly, and uh, I, I asked Hervé and Stefan if they were okay to exchange their major task and do the knowledge sharing session, which will mean that Hervé and eventually higher bits will start taking over on IRM64 migration. That doesn't mean Stefan will stop working on it at all, but the goal is to share the knowledge. So not Stefan will have the whole team knowledge and that will be the same for update center. So first of all, is it still okay for you, Stefan and Hervé to proceed the, at least for the next milestone and we do a post-mortem of that next week? Uh, I'm okay, yes. You need to, to use your thumb up a, a few more seconds before the image detection starts. Oh, it's not working. Ooh, okay, yeah, Mark, is, but you need blue. to see that. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but yeah. Anyway, so uh, 
Hervey takes the lead. Uh, needs no late sharing with Stefan. That's the idea. Stefan, can you <laughs> can you between all these balloons uh, uh, give us a heads up of what was done and uh, what's the status on that task so we yes, can get started? Pleasure. Can you open the 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 issue for me, please? Because I'm yes. not sure of the name of the last one I did. Private ingress. Yes, that's that's the one. Um, so um, I migrate private, yes, and and um, rating the rating, yes, they've been migrated. Uh, all of them were not as easy as they should have been because they needed a few change. The last one was the four four uh, Docker four four uh, image that was not uh, ARM sixty four compliant, but uh, yes, now uh, those two are done. And the list is shrinking. Of public are in RM64. So we know that we can use an ingress controller, an Nginx ingress controller with RM64. Yes. And now I think that by, by default, we got three nodes. In ARM64, so so the the migration will be uh, seeming less mm -hmm. with three nodes. It's easy. Yep, absolutely. That should be faster. Uh, that means now the next task for you, Stefan, will be to prepare a list of the uh, okay. service that need to be migrated in the cluster. I, I did. I think it's up to date. I think you you're oh. making me. Uh... Yeah, oh. it's on this. Uh, see the comment three six one nine. You get the link. If you get to the link, you get the list. Yeah. Nice job. Okay. I think it's uh, it's up to date. Okay, so you have to check one last time, but I believe it's okay. And which mean uh, Hervé, you should be able to get there. I let you folks have a, a a knowledge sharing session that should last. 30 minutes just to be sure every question and pointers are shared is that okay yes we started for the update uh, uh, migration but uh, i need way more information okay and stefan um i got three new elements on the rm64 area hmm. first of all the VPN machine, as uh, we said at the beginning of the meeting, it's the fourth time in 10 days that the VPN machine, virtual machine, started to be in a wrong state. We had to restart it from the Azure console, and it takes 10 to 20 minutes for a reboot. Um, so we did the first short-term changes earlier today. We increased the size of the virtual machine from one CPU, one gigabyte to, I believe, two CPU and four gigabyte. That's just the next uh, uh, the next size. We don't have an intermediate size there. Um, the proposal is, if no one objects, I will want to volunteer on migrating the VPN to RM64 virtual machine. Is there yes, any objection? It's, on it's this not problem? in the list, so now I need to update my list. Exactly. <laughs> But I can take care of that. RM64. The reason is that the cost of the RM64 tiny instance is between the older tiny size and the big one that we use, which is oversized. Uh, it's two CPU, one gigabyte, which is way than enough. And the performances are better, and it's a generation version too. So if there is no objection, I'm I volunteer for taking this. No problem on this. And we have two issues due to some services in that cluster running on ARM64. First one is Matomo. Uh, must stay on XA uh, on Intel. The reason is, I don't know why, and I'm waiting for an, ans an answer from the Microsoft support. We cannot reach 
the manage MySQL instance from the ARM64 node. Yes, that's weird. We can reach PostgreSQL, but we can't read. So there is something weird here. I don't know. I've asked them. I've seen five or three or four, you know, four or five persons. Yeah, four or five persons that had the same issue. So we are not alone. We are not completely crazy. But that means for now, if we want to deploy Matomo, then we need to, we need to stay on Intel. Uh, second one, we have Falco, crashing Falco agent, uh, crashing on the new, on the latest Ubuntu 22.04 kernels. It's crash loop backing off and it's failing. Um, the logs indicates that it's trying to load a module at the kernel level to check for the processes, for the security of the processes, and that module is not working with the latest model. Most probably, we need to upgrade Falco. That was a long, long, long update waiting since months. So, yeah, uh, we will have to update it in order to stop the crash loopback or stop using Falco if we don't use it. I believe we should keep using it um, yeah, so that's the current status. I don't mind taking this one unless someone is interesting interested in this. So for, uh, for the VPN VM, I will send pull request and wait for someone to validate. No need to pair on this one because I mean, it's everything we have created this issue. Uh, Stefan already worked, uh, sorry, Hervé already worked with the new VPN. Uh, I believe Stefan has enough experience on the puppet area and virtual machine, so I don't believe we should pair on this. However, for Falco, I will try to pair if it's okay. Oh yeah, and if no one is uh, available, I will just push forward on this one because it's a tiny one. Any question? I don't remember why it was uh, uh, stopped and not upgraded, Falco. Uh, because we didn't add uh, time to be sure uh, the Falco upgrade doesn't break the wall cluster. Okay. So that need time and a careful review of the contents. I believe Hervé volunteered for this, but I unprioritized the task myself, so that's my fault. So Hervé, if you're okay, we can pair on this one since you should switch to the RM64. Uh... Yep, cool. Any question on ARM64? Nope, okay. Next issue is Matomo, uh, GitHub repository, etc. So the goal is to bootstrap a Matomo instance to store the statistics and analytics of the Jenkins websites. Because since July, we don't have uh, statistics. So August and September are lost. Uh, one year ago, Gavin Morgan mentioned that he has his own instance watching for on Jenkins IO. He can share his already existing data so we can import it on our Matomo instance if we create one. I run into a lot of trouble trying to bootstrap that instance. Looks like there is a lot of um, um, knowledge that need to be shared or learned by the SRE team right now. Uh, the world subject is important, but yeah, I had so much issues with trying to start single Matomo instance and making production ready. Because I mean, following the quick start of Matomo is nice. <laughs> Running it on production, yeah. Yes, survey looks like you have your hand raised. Yeah, no, I, you've been a little bit, uh, yeah, it doesn't, you didn't like it. So I'll take, I'll take it if you want to. From your hand. Uh, yes, you, you again. Wanted, you, sorry, yeah. you wanted to. Yeah, I, I was frustrated because that's a kind of application that say, yeah, it's easy, just do this, do this, do this. And when you see a real life production environment without the root user running the processes, for instance, that's a nightmare. Most probably because it has been built to run on a virtual machine. Maybe that could be the solution. Stop using Kubernetes for that and use it on a virtual machine like it was expected to do. That might increase the safety and the ability of the system. Uh, that could be a solution. Um, I need. I ask for help for someone taking it over. 
but yeah, uh, if you volunteer, then that's a pleasure for me. I will be there to help and review. Uh, if you want review on the, let's say, the operational parts. But yeah, I need help on the uh, how to use that application properly. Ah, I can write in what? Okay. Are we volunteers to help for next steps? Um, Hervé, you mentioned that there could be alternatives or uh, we said, oh, we need to reevaluate uh, the yeah. choice of Matomo or not. Yeah. If we can stay with Matomo, it's better, as you said, we'll be able to reintegrate uh, Givens data without any okay. more work. So still the best option right now, I think. Uh, keep Matomo, less Google, need to learn. We can then import Kevin data. And there was also plausible and uh, the third one was... Uh, I have to find it back. Yeah, I don't find it, but yeah, I'll I'll find it. That I'll find it again when we, if mm -hmm. we have to evaluate uh, alternatives. Okay. Um, my proposal, Ray, if that unless you see something uh, wrong during the process, is that we switch back from uh, Gavin custom and chart and custom settings, and we start with the Bitnami, uh, let's say almost default Elm chart with their unforced image, uh, because I understand that one of the numerous customization that Gavin did on his instance was to avoid persistence as much as possible. It's the same pattern, uh, I understand, as Jenkins, when you want to have your own plugins installed in Jenkins. But a newcomer to the Jenkins Docker image need first to learn how to use Jenkins, that you need to skip the wizard, which plugin they want, how to update them, before building their own custom image with their own plugin list. My understanding is that we are in the same kind of pattern. So my proposal is that we start without these, uh, this old tuning. We start adding plugins, and then we will be able to shift to a new image once we will have gained the knowledge on this one. Does it make sense for you? Yes. Chart, and then we'll see if we need to integrate. Um, that means we might need to build our own custom Elm chart built on top of Bitnami, which would add the custom resources that uh, they pr we can integrate through values, but that's YAML in literal YAML. So that's really, really hard to, to manage. Uh, a we'll lot of cron jobs and stuff. Yep. yep. Thanks. Any uh, additional question or point on Matomo? No, okay. Uh, planning for supported GDK version in Jenkins infrastructure. Uh, Mark, I've started review of the GEP for that topic. I propose that we move uh, that issue. Um, oh, no, sorry. There were two elements. Uh, so we have to wait for the GP to be merged before writing our own support uh, roadmap to focus on the GP goals. Um, we also have GDK 19 to delete everywhere. So I thought JDK 19 was already deleted. At least I've seen build failures due to JDK 19 not being there. So I think we can proceed with JDK 19 deletion because last week I had to quickly apply a change 
to stop testing JDK19 with the 2.414.3 LTS build. So so I think JDK19 is at least gone in some places. I, I didn't do it everywhere. Mm. But I, okay, I so, so it, it needs to be. But Damien, would you be okay if we went back to the JEP topic for just a minute? Yep. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask for ask for insights there because I said something in the JEP before asking anybody on the infra anybody else on the infra team mm -hmm. about the idea. So my thought was we we would in what the JEP says is proposes that two months prior to a new Java LTS, the infra team will provide early access bits. And one month after the so this is that's the first controversial proposal right two two months prior we provide early access uh, so that testing can begin we did that with java 21 i felt like it worked quite well and so i thought maybe that's a good one but i wanted wanted a discussion here to see is that acceptable or no that's just unworkable and then the other part of the proposal was one month after the end of life of a of a uh, of a, a Java release for Jenkins, we remove it. Yep. So what that means is in November, so on December first of twenty twenty four, Java eleven will be removed. Because October 31, Java 11 is no longer supported. One month later is no, end of November. So we say December 1. Uh, that will break any plugins that are still building with Java 11. But we can't keep delivering Java 11 because security fixes are no longer available for it after that end of life. So that was that was my thought. But but it it does mean hey there will be some C jobs on CI just like in uh, same story applies for Java eight in where is when is it in twenty twenty six I believe is when they end Java Java eight end of life happens and I I don't see how we would dare to continue delivering providing a JDK when. Three months later, Oracle will issue a new release that's not available to us because we're not paying for it. And that new release may disclose security vulnerabilities that are now in the Java we have installed. Yep, absolutely. Um, Sorry. Table, so, table turn. Um, let, let, let's ask everyone and we'll speak uh, last. Okay. Let's start with Hervé. Yeah, uh, my question, which come right after reading that, is what happens to broke plugins? What is the policy about them? Is it does it mean the end of this plugin or their nope. depreciation? And no. Uh, okay, they good. can't be updated. Uh, yeah, I don't. Know. It's out of the subject of. Um, I don't know. If it's so, outside this subject. Yeah, so so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to I, I like the question. So I think what you're asking everybody is what about plugins that have not updated to stop using the dead Java version, right? Yeah. And yeah. and I think the answer is the Jenkins project continues to deliver that plugin and continues to allow that plugin to be used by others. But if the maintainer chooses not to not to update it, it the job will just fail on ci.jenkins.io. That's not a lot different than the current condition we have where we have some plugins that don't have a Jenkins file at all. And so we don't test them on ci.jenkins.io, yet we are willing to deliver them because it's the responsibility of the maintainer to decide how they test their plugin. So for me, I think the answer is we follow the same policy as always. Even if a plugin's build is broken on the master branch, we keep distributing it because it's it's still a viable plugin. Did did that address your question, Hervé, or did, is there more to the yeah, question? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, anyway, if there are more problems with them, there will be duplicated uh, one way or one other, I think. Right, right. So, so certainly plugins can be suspended from distribution if they have serious security vulnerabilities that are not resolved, right? Or they can be deprecated because there's something something better for them or a different thing. And and those two are not prevented by this policy. Just this policy does not force us to use either suspension or deprecation. Yes, okay. Good, good question. Very good. So, yes, so seems okay to me. And uh, uh, two moons area, I think it's okay if we can. I would have if we can. It's available, and yeah. And the so one one after, question. yeah. Uh, uh, so is that won't be the last time the, on the first time uh, plugin maintainers will be warned about it. So I think one month after the end of life, yeah. Thank you. Stefan, your comments? Yeah, that was my question. If the early available version is available more than two months before for us to prepare everything, and then we release the pull request and it's up and running. It, it is. Early access versions are usually available, I think, as much as six months before, oh, cool. at least four months before. And so because they're on a six-month release cadence, um, they they start the work on on the early access, yeah, at least four months before the release. Perfect. Okay, that means we need then a way to notify us about the fact that there is an upcoming one. But now that it's deterministic, that means that should only require the infrastructure team to add event on the calendar with a reminder one month right. after. Right, for basically four months or three months prior prior to September of odd numbered years, so 2025, 2027, 2029, um, we set a reminder, go looking to see that Eclipse has provided or someone else has provided an early access JDK for our current platforms at that time. Okay, Bruno? What's your advice on, do you think it should be affordable for infrastructure work since you got <laughs> some hands-on on the update Yeah, processes? but I, I'm not part of the infra team, so I don't want to give you more work than what you can do. But yeah, I think um, Mark is right about the date where we'll be able to have a look at the preview and you know how much I'm deep into the adoption community. So yes, uh, that sounds like a reasonable uh, time frame to get, to get something uh, ready for the end users. Yep, fine with me. Thank you. Kevin, you have one foot on the documentation and developers and plugins and one foot on the infra by being there every week. So what's your advice on this? Do you think it's affordable from your point of view? Uh, I mean, so I'm not exactly certain what the infra team would need to do to take care of this sort of stuff. Um, but I, I'm of the mindset that Mark's got a really good point about the end of life and how we deal with that end of it more than anything else. Um, if it's broken, if it's not getting supported, then that needs to be addressed like immediately, uh, it, whether it's a month or a two or like sooner than later, obviously better if it's broken, but yeah. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, if it's not, uh, a burden at that point, then Sure, but I think it. You, you guys know the work way better than I do, so um, it's what you think is acceptable. Yep, thanks. It still helps having a different point of views from outside because it helps on the usage. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, we uh, agree that for yep. us, as as the infra team, we we would have to prepare the pull request like two or three weeks before the date. To, to set the new GDK. And as soon as it's end of life, we prepare the, the, the two or three pull requests to remove it and we just merge it at the good time. That's what we need to do. Absolutely. And then announce to the developers on the mailing list that we will add or remove. That's, that's to answer the question of Kevin, that what yep. we have to do. That's the yeah. minimum we can do. Yeah. Uh, yep. 
I had uh, the last question was mm -hmm. the, the time between two LTS version and I just read that it's two years. So correct. Not, and, uh, and that's a cadence they've committed to 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 hold. So we're relying on them to keep their commitment on a two year cadence. Go, so excuse me, I interrupted what you were saying, Hervé. No, should... it's it's okay. It's uh, what I wanted to know the frequency of this kind of uh, early access uh, installation, but not a lot. So yeah. So on my side, I answer, the answer is yes. It sounds really easy to do, uh, as we demonstrated with GDK twenty one. Even though we had help from Bruno and Stefan. Uh, extensively on this one, but yeah, uh, now we know the process can be done quite easily. So for me, both questions as a yes answer from the infra, uh, because everyone agree on this and because that's what I think. Um, I was worried about the de deterministic part before, but if we have a calendar event every two years, six months before, that's okay for LTS. I have a question though for the non-LTS version. I haven't checked yet the policy on Jenkins because we might want to start testing early on GDK 22, for instance, once it will be released. What will be the policies? I don't know. I'm not sure if we should yeah. because with a six month prior version for LTS, maybe non LTS is just a bit too much. Yeah. Hervé, your comment? Is... Oh, go ahead, Stefan. Um... I don't know if the uh, uh, 19 has been used. And 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 I am not sure we can we can know how much it costs because if we had a non LTS and a non early available version, and and it's used as test and it's it's bringing the the bill higher. Uh, how can we? Can we know how much and 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 make the decision? Because if it costs us too much, uh, we cannot provide it, especially yeah. if it's automatically in the test. I, I I I think it's a good question that I'm intentionally not answering in that Jenkins enhancement proposal. Makes sense. And so, and you you can all say that that's me being a chicken or being. A, <laughs> I, I is oh and now i'm i'm maybe crossing a cultural boundary is the concept of being chicken applicable in french is does that mean that you were fearful and unwilling to do the brave thing uh we yes. say uh, poule mouillée uh, <laughs> wet we say a wet, wet. Uh, rooster or hen. wet oh, chicken wet hen wet hen. Yeah. wet hen yeah okay all right so so in this case i'm being a wet hen and saying that i'm not willing to answer that question my my thinking, the reason we did Java 19 is, at least for me, because I was worried that Java 21 might have terrible surprises. Uh, and they they delighted us by showing it did not have terrible surprises. And we used Java 19 actively, less actively using Java 20. I used it some internally myself. but So I don't think we need to put any commitment to do uh, non-LTS versions for any period of time. Which answer my question, is that okay for everyone? First first partial answer is, we won't provide non-LTS GDK. Well, but I, I we would, will... go, go yep. ahead, I would, I would phrase it differently. We will consider, we would consider providing non-LTS JDKs based on the technical merits of the request. <laughs> <laughs> that one is a good one. <laughs> That deserve a T-shirt or a sticker. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a diplomatic way of saying no. Right, uh, that's maybe, a polite yeah. way of saying no. Not not unless you persuade us that there's a real compelling reason. Because I love right, it. yeah, we we shouldn't do it just just because a checklist says to do it. Non LTS is not that important to us, as far as I can tell. So being a chicken is not a valid reason, I guess. <laughs> No, but being sensitive to cost is a reason. Of course. <laughs> exactly. And also, what purpose does it serve? Right. That's the question I'm asking. I, I don't say there is no purpose, but if we don't have an answer to that question, what's the point of providing thousands of things that are not used? Right, right. They, they're they're shiny. I may be a magpie. <laughs> 
Fair. Is that a compelling reason? You have two hours. <laughs> Does not commit to provide non LTS TDK. Is that okay for everyone? Unless there is a compelling reason, the infrastructure won't commit to provide non LTS TDK. Yeah, I, I would say unless there is a compelling reason, LTS or infra will not provide non LTS JDK. Yeah. Because it's it's there's no commit involved here. It's just we will not we will not provide a non LTS JDK unless there is a compelling reason why. <laughs> and a, a compelling reason I think would be fifty plugins that want to test it, not one, right? Not three. <laughs> Makes sense. Does it answer your question, Mark? It does. Thank you. Thanks for the time. Excuse my stealing time to be sure that we addressed it, but that also allows the infra team possibly to avoid reading the rather dry and specification like Jenkins enhancement proposal. We just discussed the crucial part that the that hits the infra team there. Nice. Thanks. Is there any question on the two plus two plus two version Jeep GAP? Okay. Uh uh, GDK19 deletion, we've shared uh, privately a few cleanup steps on update CLIs because GDK19 need to be removed. It has been removed on the Packer image. Uh, we still have the infra acceptance test. I believe it's checking for GDK19. Mm. We have to remove it from the Windows container agent for sure. So these are the two major elements of the platform, right? Mark, you mentioned you saw issue and some build failing on GDK19. We are interested in knowing which one. Is it core or something else? It, it's already fixed. It was on core okay. on the LTS line. It's already fixed on the main branch. It was only not fixed on the LTS line because we don't worry about LTS lines, but about once a month. And I'm pleased to say that the agent acceptance test is agent availability test is already fixed and not checking Java 19. Okay. It, it was it was annoying me over the weekend and I or, or sometime last week and I fixed it when I saw that the test was failing. Okay, we checked for GDK nineteen, but I believe we focused on plugins only and forgot about the core. So if you see other areas where GDK nineteen right. could be used, don't hesitate to share it with us and I'm, we can send pull request. Well, and and the other is if we detect one, we just submit a pull request to remove it. Right, JDK nineteen is same same thing we do with many other places. Bruno and I are going through adding Java twenty one testing to many plugins, and it's just sweeping through doing it. Cool. Thanks for the collaboration here. That's really useful. Any other question about JDK lifecycle? Nope, last topic, the biggest and most important one, but the last as usual, yay. Hervé, can you give us a heads up? And then I will write down the same uh, because uh, you need to share knowledge with Stefan. And so St Stefan can get started with your guidance for the next milestone. Yes. So um, I pursued my test uh, for synchronize the Azure file share and the R2 Cloudflare bucket uh, using uh, removing uh, symlinks and uh, using a local uh, repository uh, folder um, to test the job. Uh, I'm around uh, one minute and a half uh, for both operation. I need now to test. I've I've run the test with uh, Stefan uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, the AirSync from the job to the update center virtual machine uh, volume is taking around uh, twenty seconds, I think. But looking at the current uh, update center jobs. They are taking around three minutes uh, in total, each of them, in a, a little bit less, a little bit more, depending on the run. So I have to check with Daniel if this job can run in the 
bit more time, like four or five minutes. And if it's the case, we will be able to add the Azure File Share and the R2 bucket synchronization to the current published script for uh, be able to test uh, our uh, own update center as uh, with a real uh, Jenkins instance while keeping uh, the current uh, virtual machine updated. OK. Um, question, have you tried the parallelization one way or the other to see the impact? No. By parallelization, I mean so you start by the generation on the script, and then there are different methods. You can use background shell process and the wait instruction at the first, uh, let's say, naive test. The goal is to have the AirSync, AWS S3Sync, and Azure Copy Sync to happen in parallel on the agent, and the script wait for the free to finish before terminating and sending an exit code. The first step will be parallelize naively each of these commands are sent on background. And then you use the wait keyword. That means your script will parallelize and then wait before finishing. The downside of this one is that the script will be unable to capture the exit code of each subprocess, but you will have an idea of the time it takes. The goal is just to have a rough estimation of is it still at three minutes? Is it decreasing to one minute and a half? What I want to check is the impact on the CPU of the machine because these steps are heavily relying on the CPU. And if we increase the agent size from four to, to, to from two to four CPUs in order to decrease the time and benefit from parallelization, it's absolutely okay because it's a critical step and increasing the CPU size is important. Don't you think we can also fine tune those those uh, air sync and AZ copy and everything to use more no. parallelization? No. Um, the problem, yeah. Uh, so AZ copy is uh, not benefiting from adding too much thread as their doc as whatever we found on the documentation. Correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, Hervé. You found that you need at least five or I don't remember five or ten CPU before yes. benefiting from increasing the threads. Yes, yeah, some option so we need to, more money. There are some options to reduce its execution time, like uh, lowering its, it, uh, its slug uh, level or something like that. Oh. But it's not a longer operation anyway. It's the AWS S3 thing, which takes more time currently. So if we can't, uh, the problem is the um the, the command executed before this thing which we can't produce so generate yeah. script executed before this one has to, has to run anyway so yep but yeah the goal of um, is to say let's parallelize the copy operations because yeah. the cost of that will be only a Let's add way more CPUs and two to four CPUs. It's absolutely okay. Yeah, and that opened the, the yes. door for more uh, uh, nodes. Yeah. As we deal with the copy for each node. Is it completely a thing from a new W from a new local WW two folder? Took uh, twenty seconds, so it's three minutes less. Uh, three minutes uh, minus. 20 seconds we have for running each of these sync or any of these sync must be under this time if we can't uh, increase uh, total time. The uh, current air sync to the current uh, virtual machine isn't uh, taking the most, uh, uh, taking more than 20 seconds. So it's the time we have. Okay. And you can't have multiple nodes because you need to have the cache. Well, well, Everything well. must be done from one machine. Yeah. Yes. So you have to to do the, the copy, the first one, and the syncing mm -hmm. 
from that machine, which yep. is the source of truth, to all the nodes we want to use with the new mind. Oh, okay. That's what that's, that's what you call nodes. Okay. It's because yeah. node is a Jenkins reserve keyword for the oh, machine sorry. where you are running agents. And since we copy to one virtual machine, one uh, Cloudflare bucket, and one Azure file storage, nodes uh, wasn't... Yeah, the word is not the, the best choice. Easy. Anyway. Yep. Sorry. Uh, okay, okay, now I understand what you said and makes sense. Yeah. So my proposal is Hervé, can you evaluate, uh, Stefan and Hervé, evaluate the parallelization impact on both CPU and time. It's not because it's slower that it can be accelerated by adding CPUs. Trust me on this one, AWS has free benefit from CPUs. Um, some people here will argue that RM64 will be even more powerful, but building a data center with RM64 is for later. Oh, uh, I think that will be way faster for the DAT agents. But anyway, uh, second well, thing no. is if we can demonstrate that parallelization work and allows us to not focus on the three minute threshold, that means we can benefit from GNU parallel commands. We only have to use it and make it a prerequisite of the update center script like GQ is done, and then that's okay. Um, Hervé, you, you told me that you had, um, let's say, not really good performances from Air Clone. However, I but, you yep. already, you can't use multiple remote as target, so it won't help us. Oh, Air Clone can't parallelize. We tried, I've tried mm -hmm. Air Clone also to see if it could be quicker than AWS CLI but it isn't, it's two or three times uh, longer. But we kept this uh, on the side because we wanted to know if we could use it to uh, parallelize the upload to multiple remote destinations like the Azure File Share and the update uh, uh, VM volume. Because AirClone oh, seems yeah. to support every technology we have there. I'm not sure for the file share though. You mentioned it. Maybe I found the link uh, to use uh, a new URL with uh, SS token. So oh. I don't know if we we have to try. I I'm not. I'm really not sure. But it doesn't mm -hmm. cost a lot to try. Yep, that was that is worth the checking because that would have been replacing AirSync and AWS S3 and AZ copy commands yeah, Air Clone. by AirClone to have a one way of determining source and destination. But since AirClone is slower and looks like we can parallel, we can ask it to parallelize, and especially given the test that Hervé run and it's slower for the S3 copy in the context of Cloudflare, that means yeah better to parallelize with pure shell steps. Any question? Okay. So that means you have to work on that topic, folks. The goal is to be able to test an almost real life update center every three minutes. So don't, don't forget to let Daniel and the other know what you are doing. Uh, that's what you did uh, nowadays. So thanks for the work there. That's a great set of results. So let's continue on this one. And I believe next week we should have something running. Okay, uh, next topic for this one <laughs> is uh, I also have something on, on mind for that topic. Elm chart ingress for the new mirror bits. We have issues on the ingress when it's selecting HTTPD versus mirror bits. Uh, I need to fix this. I don't understand the issue. I have the same ingress as what we have for get Jenkins IO and still it's not working as what we want. So I need to I need to tinker with this one. Um, once I have a better understanding of this, I will uh, check with you. If you have time to spend Stefan and Hervé on this one, you can don't hesitate to check as well what is going wrong. Um, most probably we need to set up a local mirror bit instance on K3S uh, to test and break it. Uh, if you have ideas, we can discuss it after the meeting. I just want to release uh, everyone. Um, 
Oh yes, Jenkins IO dash dash delete RV. Good point. Yeah, it's on the C uh, next milestone, so it's why we didn't have mm -hmm. this system here. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Kevin, you've done uh, a complete pass on the list of the file, which were potentially deleted. Uh, yeah. As far as I read the comments, uh, everything seems uh, seems to agree that there is no uh, file left behind. So I plan to to create a new backup and uh, announce uh, the activation of this uh, option, this delete option to delete uh, often uh, web page on the Jenkins IO website for um, the first day after the LTS and the weekly release. I will announce it uh, on a status uh, incident and in uh, the Jenkins Infra and Jenkins Talk channel. IRC. We are uh, 17, 18, 19. Any objection on Thursday? For Thursday 19 for uh, this operation? One, two, three, okay. So let's add it to the next milestone. And thanks, Kevin, thanks, Hervé, for taking care of this. And thanks, Binek, by the way. Okay, do you have other topics? No, so then so I propose we, yep. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, I was one, so there was an issue that came up uh, back in February about retiring the Chinese Jenkins site. Um, and it looks as though uh, Damien, you commented back in September uh, with some information regarding it and the Helm charts that it's uh, apparently mm -hmm. using. Uh, and I was wondering if it would be possible to um, potentially get that on the uh, radar and um, what I can do to help with that, because I'm, I'm not sure how the Helm charts work and how that would go about um, getting the redirects set up. So. Uh, I'm more than happy to step in and um, assist in any way I possibly can, but it does seem a little bit beyond my uh, abilities as a writer to get through these things and then kind of update them all. So, um, Maybe or maybe not. Um, I don't mind. Oh, thanks for the link. I don't mind trying to spend, a f let's say, is that okay for you if we try tomorrow or Thursday based on your availabilities? I would yeah. like to show you how to set up a local K3S cluster. That's one command line uh, using Docker. And then find a way to install the Jenkins IO website on it. So if you can try locally, that means then we can start playing with the Elm chart or removing parts or just editing the Kubernetes resources so you can start playing around with the redirection and stuff. I don't know what is the complexity of the redirect we expect. But if the redirection pattern can be factorized to one to, to less than 10 redirection, uh, that could only be ingress rules and then removing the ZH uh, pods. But that's just a superficial and naive evaluation. So I believe, uh, yeah, having a first discussion, I can we can both check the high level architecture, no need for Kubernetes low level concept. And then based on the discussion, we can see what can be done on your side, on our side, on both sides. I I would love to be involved in that. If you don't mind delaying the discussion until next week when I'm available, uh, I would I would be delighted because learning how to set up a, a small cluster would be a very helpful thing for me. Mm -hmm. And I think you're making exactly the right assumption. I think it's a single redirect pattern, which is if the URL starts with slash ZH slash, replace that with slash. Okay, that could make and, sense. And, and so yep. in, in, I'm glad to hear that you're saying that that may be a very simple thing to implement ultimately. I like that. But I think having Kevin and I both as documentation people mm -hmm. able to duplicate the, set, the setup, the Kubernetes setup and test drive, what happens when we remove this 
is a very healthy thing rather than either he or I doing a blind removal and hoping it doesn't break the whole world. It's good for me. Um, I got a counter proposal. I mm. still spend 30 minutes with Kevin because that will be my pleasure. And in order to check if Kevin uh, uh, is okay with that, then Kevin, you will make what uh, Mark do what I told you. I can be there if you You'll are destroy a your production cluster. But yeah, you first we destroy the production cluster, both of us, <laughs> and then you make Mark destroy the production clusters that we just rebuilt after the first destroy. Does it make sense? Is that okay for you? Thank, <laughs> thankfully, Mark fire. has no access to any Kubernetes production clusters. Therefore, we have no problem there. Oh, I was about to ask if I could bring my popcorn, but uh, <laughs> <it's my fist. laughs> then we record it and we can do a talk which will be named Dev Oops <laughs> the right way. <laughs> No, I'm I, I'm serious about uh, if it's okay for your planning and your willingness, Kevin. We start the both of us, so we can discuss exchange, and then we can plan a session next week. The three of us with Mark, you driving that time. I'm there if anything is if you're not sure or whatever. That could be interesting discussion, and then we can make Mark uh, uh, learn what we discuss and learn together. Is that okay for the oh. two of you? That works for me. Cool. I love it. Cool. Be careful, Kevin. You will need three time to make sure that you understand and do this thing correctly. I know quite well, Damien, now. But, and, and even better, you'll get three times to watch Damien not destroying the production cluster. <laughs> Fair. Jean-Marc Messon will say um, planting seeds here, but yeah. <laughs> you all of you start to know me. Uh, let's pair and involve mark next week as well okay cool so i will uh, send her i will uh, take it offline uh, privately with you to plan the, the schedule due to the time zones but yeah it's let's add it to the, the upcoming milestone great thank you very much damien appreciate thanks, it so much. thanks mark do you have other new topics folks since it's a bit late, I will skip the triage because I'm not sure we had uh, tons of new issues. Uh, if we had new issues, they will be added to the milestone as usual. Um, and then I can release you because it was a rather long thing and I was late. So unless someone objects, we can see each other next week for the recording. Bye-bye. I'm stopping the recording. If I can find Bye. the right button.